so uh, I, I, I would like to request uh, Professor Mitra to say a few valedictory remarks, and uh, and then we will sort of say formally close the conference. And from a, a kind of a system theory point of view of, uh, if you like, modeling system identification. And um, perhaps that might suggest some research programs uh, where there might be an effective interaction between people doing atmospheric modeling or ocean modeling and sort of systems people. So the, I, I think currently there's a great deal of interest on relating theory to experiment, uh, uh, theories to data, uh, sort of theories to computational models and simulation. And there, there are situations where there aren't theories, like in, typically in biology, where you want to really explore the data and eventually construct theories. I mean, see patterns and eventually construct theories. Now, interestingly, um, uh, many years ago, Dirac wrote a paper on this, this whole issue of the relation between theory and experiment and so on. And there's also an interesting paper by Einstein uh, on these questions. So in many ways, uh, this debate between uh, theory and experiment is, is going on for a, for a long time. OK, so um, the way we think, we, me meaning systems people think about modeling it, the first question you have to ask is, what is the model for? I mean, that's a very important question. Uh, if you want to build models which explain past data, those models may or may not be good if you're interested in prediction. I mean, that's a, that's a very important issue. And when you're interested in predictive models, then there's a fundamental trade-off between, if you like, so-called misfit and complexity. And this relates to the whole issue of overfitting of data. But the important message is that um, a, a, a model which explains very well past data may or may not be a good predictive model. And that's something uh, one needs to pay, pay attention to, in my opinion. Um, so another kind of models that we construct is models which we are going to use to control some system. So you may have a description of a chemical process in terms of coupled systems of partial differential equations. But if you want to control the process, you might get away with, with very small models. Okay? So the, I think the question of what you want to use the model for is, in my view, an important question. Okay, so this is also related to the whole issue of parametrization and the so-called problem of identifiability, right? I think in uh, Vaninathan's talk, he talked about observability, which is injecti injectivity of the map from the initial conditions or initial and boundary conditions to the outputs. So uh, the issue of identifiability relates to the, to the map from the space of parameters to the outputs, whether that's injective or not. So if you overparameterize a system, I mean, you may not be able to identify the parameters. And that's, I think that's, that's an important issue. And this, this relates to the, the whole geometry of the space of systems as the parameter varies. And so, in, in, so uh, for example, for linear systems, we understand linear system, time invariant linear system. The geometry of the space of rational functions plays a very important role. For example, that space is not connected. So if you want to identify the system, if you start in the wrong connected component, unless you allow for in your algorithm to jump from one connected component to the other, the, you will not be able to identify the system. So the geometry of the, of the, the space of systems is, is an important object which you need, one needs to understand. OK. Now, then there's the whole issue of model validation, which, which one needs to worry about, and the issue of experimental design. 
namely uh, what kind of, if, if you have the choice of using inputs to vary the, the system, which might help in actually identifying or, or you know, being able to excite the characteristic modes of the system, or, or there may be unobservable modes which, you know, which, which play a role. So the model validation and experimental design is an important issue. The second thing uh, we worry about, and, and I think there's interest is, is what I would call the distinction between closed systems and open systems. So, uh, I mean, the caricature of physics would be you study dx by dt equals f of x of t with some initial condition and potentially boundary condition, right? The interaction of the system with the environment is captured totally in the initial and boundary condition. Whereas in, in situation we would be interested in, this, there's a system which interacts with an, always interacts with an environment, right? So what we would do is we would, we would cut that interconnection. We would model as far, as much as the system as we can. And those variables of those inputs and outputs which we cannot model, that, that is free and then we model the environment, then we will we'll equate variables in order to connect the two systems. So the issue of modeling from sort of a more modular view of how you might model a, a complicated system is, is an important issue where, you know, I think system theories potentially have something to say. Uh, so this raises the whole issue, which we have a really a poor understanding of, is the whole issue of interconnections and interactions. So you have an in interconnected system. You understand the properties of, say, the subsystems. You interconnect them. What properties are preserved? And so, for example, one can show if the system is dissipative in some sense. You have two dissipative systems, and you connect to a lossless system, the resulting system is dissipated. That's the sorts of results that one wants to, uh, you know, one wants to prove, okay. And uh, so I would say what, what you might call this is, this is physics with inputs and observations. So imagine, so whatever you could do with the x by dt equals f of x t and x of t0 equals x0, look how much more you'll be able to do if you allow a u of t dx by dt equals f of xt, u of t, y of t equals h of x of t. I can enlarge this enormously. Okay. Uh, now, uh, there is, uh, right, so, uh, these, the, the second set of comments I, I want to make is, is the issue of Inference versus control in inference. If you uh, right, I mean, observability is the, is sort of the injectivity of the map, but but if you have a nonlinear system, then then you cannot just set the control equal to zero. I mean, I mean, there are a variety of notions of observability. Right. So if you want to do, I don't know, Bayesian inference, but you have choice. Of, of actually using controls to help the inference, that problem is different from Bayesian inference problem. Okay. Um, now, my own view of Bayesian inference is, is that it's much more than, than just the Bayes formula. Okay? I think it, it, is, it is the viewpoint that the fundamental thing that you need to understand is prior knowledge of the or, or theories, if you wish, and observations and data. What is the nature of the interaction, right? I mean, that's what, I mean, my work on the variational interpretation is, is a step in that direction, that what is the balance between how is the prior distribution and the likelihood? What is the, the appropriate balance between the two? Now, also, it is not ne necessary to, to be able to, uh, capture all the prior information in some one initial distribution. You could have a family of distribution, and then you could do some min-max problem or something like that. 
so so there there are variants and and of Bayes uh, inference, which uh, which may be of interest when you have uh, you know whole family of prior distributions, right? Coming, for example, if if, if you have information coming from different sources in some sense, or, or uh, which which you want to to connect together in some ways. Uh, there is current work going on in in sort of you want to do sort of filtering in different levels of resolution. So multi-resolution uh, and, and multi-scale. So uh, finally, uh, I think there is a there is a role of information theory in all of this, uh, namely uh, capturing. Uh, you, right, you want to steer the observations in a certain way in order to to maximize sort of information about key variables in some sense. I think those problems are perhaps amenable to formulation in terms of filtering and stochastic control, etc. Uh, and and I think this 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 ideas of information theory in in, in say in Bayesian inference or or, um, or uh, that I'm suggesting I think has close connections to to statistical mechanics. Especially if you're interested in not just, uh, if you like, you're interested in space-time processes, uh, not just uh, where you might have a spatial Markov structure and also temporal Markov structure in some sense. Then I think there's, there's it, there would be interest in, in 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 kind of taking a statistical mechanical view using information theory to have. Understanding of these problems. So uh, my uh, final comment is: uh, now that I know more about what what data assimilation actually means, I think an interaction between uh, system theorists and control theorists and people working on atmospheric modeling and so on would be uh, an interesting direction to uh, to foster. And maybe TIFR is the right place to do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you all.